Hi, my name is Matt Sosman. I'm a senior security architect at Microsoft. And today I want to talk to you about Azure Active Directory and go through some whiteboarding scenarios with you. Let's get started. As you know, Azure Active Directory, this is a universal platform to manage and secure identities and access to all applications from any device or location with just a single set of credentials. It provides employees the secure and easy access to every application from any location and any device. But in addition to providing access to Microsoft services like Office 365, Azure, Dynamics, etc., it also provides access to third-party applications, whether they're SaaS applications located in the cloud or on-premises applications behind a firewall. And there's over 1.3 million active applications that are already integrated with Azure Active Directory today. And then with single sign-on, employees now have only a single set of login credentials to remember. And that's how they access all of their apps. Single sign-on eliminates the frustration of having to create and remember unique passwords for each and every application, and it improves security of corporate data. 81% of corporate attacks are down due to stolen or weak passwords. With automated identity processes such as the user lifecycle, this enables you to have one central point of control versus multiple points of control for access. This makes it easier to automatically onboard provision and offboard deprovision applications. So if a user leaves the organization, they will immediately lose access to every single app. But let alone from that, if the user's identity gets compromised, you have a single identity to then disable. No one wants a disgruntled employee having access to the corporate Twitter account, as an example. The self-service portal for the users will save you time and money in resetting passwords, providing access to groups for your users' request, and setting up multi-factor authentication. Users can manage and reset passwords themselves easily from a self-service portal with no need to actually call the help desk. A recent Forrester Research report states that the average help desk labor cost for a single password reset is, you guessed it, $70. That's a lot. However, given passwords are the weakest link in the security chain, again, 81% of all breaches leverage stolen or weak passwords, we do recommend all organizations to go passwordless. Microsoft is a leader in passwordless solutions for the enterprise, with options including Windows Hello, Microsoft Authenticator, and even FIDO2 security keys, my favorite part, that users can register for themselves in the self-service portal. Again, no need to call the help desk or IT. The majority of security breaches take place when attackers gain access to an environment by stealing a user's identity. As soon as attackers gain access to even low-privileged user accounts, it is relatively easy for them to gain access to important company resources through lateral movement. Azure Active Directory can help protect access from these advanced threats. The way to reduce risk of compromise is to continuously track normal and abnormal behavior, apply artificial intelligence, and automate the responses. Azure Active Directory Identity Protection, also known as risk-based conditional access, provides ongoing risk detection and remediation of suspicious user accounts to proactively prevent compromised identities from being abused. Azure Active Directory Identity Protection enables customers to configure policies to automatically respond when a user's identity has been compromised. These policies can either block access or initiate mitigation actions, such as a password reset or multi-factor authentication enforcement. MFA provides an additional layer of authentication where needed so I don't need to prompt my users every single time for MFA. I only need to prompt them when it actually matters, i.e. when their account is compromised. The more layers and factors that are in place, the more the risk of an intruder gaining access to critical systems and data is reduced. MFA, multi-factor authentication, reduces risk of compromise by 99.99%. If you only do one thing to help protect your organization, turn on multi-factor authentication. Based on Microsoft research, 95% and up of compromised sign-ins are discovered by our machine learning. And remember, you don't have to enable MFA to prompt every single time a user signs in. With what I just described, it only challenges the user for MFA when the identity is actually under attack. 
common signals that conditional access can take into account when making a policy decision include the following. User or group membership. Policies can be targeted to, spe to specific users and groups, giving administrators fine-grained control over access. IP location information with organizations can create trusted IP address ranges that can be used when making policy decisions. Administrators can specify entire country IP ranges or block or allow traffic to and from. My favorite part though is device-based. Users with devices of specific platforms are marked with a specific state by Intune can be used when enforcing conditional access policies. Microsoft Defender ATP alerts can trigger Intune and conditional access policies. Applications that users are using, when users attempt to access those applications, they can trigger different conditional access policies. In real time and calculated risk detection, and those signals that Azure AD Identity Protection uses allows conditional access policies to identify risky sign-in behavior. Policies can then force users to perform a password change or challenge it with multi-factor authentication to reduce the risk and block their access until an administrator actually takes action. Now here's my favorite part. Enable, we can enable user application access and sessions to be monitored and controlled in real time using Microsoft Cloud App Security, increasing visibility and control over access to and activities performed within the cloud environment. So a great example of that is preventing cut, copy, and paste within a web application, being able to prevent you from downloading sensitive data from an application. Now let's talk about some of these common decisions that we've been uh, walking through here. Blocking access, make the most restrictive decision. Or I can grant access using a least restrictive decision, but I could still require multi-factor authentication. But my favorite part is requiring the device to be compliant, requiring the device to be either domain joined or managed by Intune. Require that they have to use an approved application and then require some kind of a protection policy if it's a mobile device. Many organizations out there have common access concerns that frankly conditional access policies can help with, such as requiring multi-factor authentication for users with administrative access, requiring multi-factor authentication for Azure management tasks, blocking sign-ins for users attempting to use legacy authentication, and requiring trusted locations for MFA, blocking or granting access to and from specific locations, and blocking risky sign-in behaviors requiring that ma organization-managed devices must be used for accessing specific applications. Okay, moving along here, in addition to providing all those benefits I just talked about to the employee, Azure Active Directory extends managing all of your external identities, including customers and partners, in the cloud to provide better experiences and greater security. And a great example of this is guest access in Microsoft Teams. So while identity protection provides ongoing risk detection, identity governance ensures that the right users, including your partners and customers, have the right access to the right resources. Access is easy to grant, but much harder to keep track of. You need to track who was given access to what resources and revoke access to it in a timely manner when it is no longer needed. Control should apply to both internal and external users. With identity governance, a native part of Azure Active Directory, it allows you to balance the organization's need for security and employee productivity with the right processes and visibility. It allows you to protect, monitor, and audit access to critical assets while ensuring employee productivity. Specifically, it's intended to help organizations manage some of these scenarios, such as ensure that only authorized users have access to resources based on defined policies, Provide employees and guest users with simple workflows to request access. Establish regular access reviews to validate if access is still needed. And my, my most uh, favorite here is establish effective controls with time limited access for privileged role assignments. So if they're an admin, we handle it differently. All right, so let's talk about an example here. Users accessing confidential customer data in Salesforce in Europe need to know what the company's policies are in Europe so the company can be compliant with GDPR. This cannot be a one-time action. It needs to be done every year and on every device the user may use to access the data. What if users don't know what access rights they need? 
They were just assigned to that marketing project and need to get the, pro the, the product out right away. What should you do to ensure that when the project is completed, users no longer have access to those documents and applications? The solution is to this is to access um, the application using Azure Active Directory and then have Identity Governance provide that integrated set of capabilities to address those challenges and govern access effectively and appropriately for all of those users. Okay, so let's wrap things up here a little bit. Azure Active Directory, it has its deep integrations across Microsoft 365, Office 365, Windows 10, Intune, Cloud App Security, and so on and so forth. And together, Microsoft 365, not Office 365, but Microsoft 365 makes for a complete, intelligent, secure solution to empower your employees, make them more productive, yet remain secure. Azure Active Directory underpins every Microsoft Cloud service, and therefore, it's very likely you may already be using it, and you may already own it today. But remember, you see some other logos up here on the screen. It could also apply to third-party applications. Okay, folks, thanks again for listening to this video and watching the whiteboard session. If you have any questions, hit me up on LinkedIn. Happy to help, and have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.